All right, so at first I would like to speak with you about how do you see uh, say the European integration as an issue in the pub German public space. Because it's obvious that uh, in the last uh, political campaign, the two biggest parties didn't want to speak about the European integration that much. So they somehow avoided the, the whole topic in the, in the campaign. So how would you, how would you see that? There may be the things that are peculiar, but um, the European integration is not a real issue in Germany. Uh, we had lots, lots to do to handle the crisis uh, in the European Union and the Euro. But uh, how integration should go on is not a major uh, topic. So I think um, both major parties don't want to discuss this because uh, they want to don't want to wake up the populace. So um, they keep it um, with tongue in cheek. They speak about it with tongue in cheek, um, and there are only a few issues that are discussed. For example. Um, how the budget discipline can be uh, held in Europe, uh, new regulations, sanctions and all that. That's a very German debate, I think. Uh, and that is a debate uh, which is important, um, but um, it's not a debate about the entire uh, development in Europe. Uh, it's not a, um, we don't really discuss uh, how Europe will look like in 20 years or something like that. And do you see it as a problem that there is the absence of uh, the talk, talking about the vision? Because I can imagine that since you are working for the side now in the strongest media houses, uh, how you, I would assume that you would be pushing for such a, a discussion on the yeah. vision of 10, 20 years maybe. Yeah, we try to push this debate, of course, um, by choosing some um, maybe utopian perspectives. Um, of uh, uh, deep integra integrationists, uh, such as um, Daniel Cohn-Bendit or people like him. Uh, people who want um, an entire um, integration, uh, a deep integration, something like a European uh, state. Um, and uh, they say it so, and they are very um, strong in their uh, opinion. So, um, I, we um, talked with them and I moved against them. So we had some sort of uh, debate, but uh, the politicians didn't join this debate, actually. Uh, unfortunately, I would say. But um, I have some understanding for the politicians in Germany uh, at the moment because we had such a, a strong integration uh, over the last years, uh, not an integration that anybody wanted. Uh, about integration that happened. Um, and that was very um, strong and very um, uh, hard for the, uh, for the Germans, for other countries too. Um, and I think they don't want to uh, um, exaggerate uh, the issue. So we had more integration, and to say now, after having uh, this push integration, we want another push. Uh, that would raise uh, a lot of um, resistance in the, in the population. The argument of uh, the populist or extremist movement somehow is uh, that the mainstream parties are afraid of talking about the issue. So they are not joining the debate, they are pushing for the real debate. Mm -hmm. That's what the populists are saying, not even in Germany, but in, in the Netherlands, in, in the UK, in France as well. Uh, the, there is, let's say, there are two sides which you can choose in this debate. Whether you want to do the real debate and invite uh, as well as the populists and the mainstream parties, or whether you are avoiding the topic. Uh, this may happen with the European integration or this integration of some minorities as well. Uh, which one of these, let's say, positions or actions do you think is uh, more visible in Germany or which is being preferred? Maybe by the politicians or by the media. Can you talk about it a bit, please? Uh, yes, <clears throat> we really don't have a strong populist movement in Germany. Only one very small populist party, uh, which is uh, strongly against the EU and integration, and we are very happy about that. Um, the, there are two things in, um, during. There were two things during the last two or three years 
during the EU crisis. Two things that did not happen. And maybe these were the most important things, at least for Germany, maybe for the, the whole Europe. And one thing was the German consumer did not stop consuming, although he was a little bit worried, but he went on. And he did not often, did more often go to the bank than he usually did. If he had done this, the, the entire European economy would have collapsed. So this is the one thing that did not happen. And another thing did not happen. There was no strong populist movement in Germany. Um, and <clears throat> this is very crucial, I think, because uh, populist movement or populist party in parliament in Germany is not the same as it is in Netherlands or in France. Same, same, but different. Everybody would say, who? Oh, what is happening in Germany? Is there something happening again or something like that? So we try to, to, to keep them down to keep them out of the public, not strong, not strictly. We discuss with them, they are invited to uh, talk shows and all that. But we don't treat them as equal partners in the dialogue. So they are somehow suspicious to us and we show them. So I hope that we can keep them under control. You are speaking as we, which means that you, you are referring to the media and yeah. us all, I assume, right? Yes, there is uh, some consensus in the media uh, to not let um, a right-wing populist party come into parliament and get into power. So we don't talk about that very often. Uh, we, uh, the, the consensus is silent consensus among the media. And the mainstream politicians support it, of course, right? because they don't want the populist to be preferred. Yes, and there is, there is a risk in this strategy because um, we suppress them softly and that may can turn them into heroes and rebels and martyrs or something like that but we take care of this point I think. The problem with the populists is that they somehow uh, may usually manage to let's say, be seen as anti-establishment movement so they are going against the media or against uh, the, against the mainstream politicians or political parties. This hasn't happened in Germany. That's really interesting because it's happening in France to some level, and it's Front National, or in the Netherlands and maybe a bit in the UK as well. Mm -hmm. Do you see the roots of why it's not happening in Germany? Is it the historical experience? Oh, there are uh, several reasons for that. One is, as you mentioned, uh, history mm, that makes it very, very difficult to uh, to found a uh, political party on the right wing, which is not con contaminated uh, by uh, Nazi uh, freaks. So this is one uh, reason. The other reason maybe is uh, that we have a public uh, that works very well, uh, I think. Um, the owner of our newspapers mostly uh, don't intervene in our journal. There are no uh, um, politically uh, interested owners, uh, you rarely find them. So the dialogue of society with itself uh, is not uh, eliminated by some, uh, by its uh, invested by its interests or by uh, economic interests or something like that. So <coughs> um, the dialogue is uh, is working very well. That is the second reason. Um, well, then we have I forgot the third reason. Oh, you, the, first, the first one was historical reason, probably. Yeah. Like the, 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 the Germans are too responsible, let's say they know what happened in the, in the past, so they yeah. don't want to go yeah. no, the, no, no, no. the third reason is um, that uh, an anti establishment poli politics is not very easy because um, our establishment is not uh, as hermetic uh, and um, not as established as in other countries. For example, in Great Britain or in France, uh, our chancellor uh, is, um, uh, has been raised in a um, parish house. Um, uh, the leader of the Social Democrats, the um, next uh, vice chancellor, was um, born by a nurse. So uh, that is very, very uh, usual. You rarely find someone. Uh, in the political establishment in Germany, who comes from um, from uh, some sort of elite, 
this is a meritocracy for what we have. Uh, and therefore, to say these are very, very other people than the ordinary people is not as easy as it is, as it is for example, in France. Uh, my other issue I would like to speak about is the issue of, uh, let's say, Muslim in integration of Muslim minorities in Germany. I'm not speaking about the real integration, about integration policies, but more about how the public sees it. So, or how, how the public debate is, uh, let's say, divided in Germany. Because uh, in, in Czech Republic there are so many Muslims, but there are some uh, political parties who are pushing for, for the issue. They try to say that this has happened in Germany, look what's happening in Germany, we don't want this to happen to us again as well. So I, would, I was just wondering whether you could somehow go through, uh, say from the 60s, when the first or first wave of families came to Germany, as, as Gastarbeiter or the other. The other people. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be uh, say curious about how would you see the development of public debate on, uh, I, I don't want to speak about Muslims at first, but about the minorities in Germany, mm -hmm. because I know that in Germany it's, it's somehow a different uh, style of integration compared to France, compared to the Netherlands or the UK as well. Mm -hmm. So I would be, I would be really curious about how it, how, how it has happened in Germany that right now it doesn't look like that uh, the political establishment uh, there's no let's say populist party who would be really really advanced in uh, mm -hmm. discussing Muslims right now. Well, it, uh, to me it seems that um, the German public is not very aware of the fact that we have a long. Uh, a positive and successful history of uh, integration and immigration. Uh, that's because that's why we that's because we don't uh, call some of this um, migration periods uh, migration. To begin with, in the 50s, uh, millions of refugees from Eastern Europe uh, came to Western Germany, and they have been integrated very well, lots of them in Bavaria. And the other ways coming. Um, afterwards uh, from Portugal, Spain and Italy and Greece have been integrated quite well and with uh, few problems, I would say. The next major wave of integration um, of people who seemed to be at first at least a little bit strange uh, was the German reunification because the Eastern Germans were integrated into German, in the Western Germany and, uh, and the other way around, right, vice versa. And that was um, another uh, effort, successful effort of integration, self-integration, if you may put it like this. And after that, um, the Muslims came, so some of them were, were there already, the Turkish minority uh, grew stronger and stronger. And that brought some special problems, uh, that, which is obvious, uh, because it's not a religion, for, for example. Um, and they, most of them came from uh, the east of, of Turkey, and that means a uh, very rural population. And the gap between their cultural experience and their kind of civilization and the, uh, the German, uh, um, a very developed industrial country, was a wide gap, of course. And maybe we did not really discuss um, the issue enough and the problems openly, uh, frankly, um, and therefore we had this uh, severe and ugly debate, uh, which we call the Zalatin debate. Zalatin was an author who said um, Germany uh, is abolishing itself because uh, it does not resist against uh, the Muslims, um, and the German population, the original German population is shrinking, and the Muslims um, getting more and more, and that is his theory, and this um, unleashed uh, a lot of aggression so for, uh, that was suppressed before. And then we had a discussion, maybe uh, half a year or something like that, um, which was um, hostile uh, and intensive, um, but in the end, um, things got better. Uh, many things were, were um, finally discussed. Everybody was somehow exhausted with the issue, um, and uh, which is 
maybe the most important thing, uh, the Turkish minority, uh, most of all the uh, second generation or the third generation, uh, got a new feeling of uh, self-awareness uh, and self-esteem. And they uh, showed to the, the, uh, to the Germans, here we are, and this is what we are. We are young, we are well-educated, and we want to have our, uh, our share in this society. And during this entire debate, um, everybody uh, took a second look, a look to his uh, personal Muslim in the neighborhood, and they started arguing, but arguing is a way of talking, and they uh, get to know each other better than before. And therefore, the situation at the moment uh, is quite well. Uh, I would say we have still these problems, uh, unemployment is uh, higher, uh, in the minorities and in the original Germans, but um, it's not, it's all manageable. We can handle this and we do handle this. The next government, uh, Grand Coalition, they will um, make it possible that uh, the Turkish minority can keep two passports. At the moment, they have to decide between the age of 18, uh, 18 and 23 whether they have the German or the Turkish passport and they make it possible now that they can have both and that's showing something that we understood and we understand that they don't have to, they don't want to decide between their origin and their presence. So uh, this is a more humane uh, and that's a step forward. So the end of the, this ugly debate, this ugly debate was um, progress. So you are saying that uh, the Sarazin debate has somehow emancipated the, the, the minority in the public eye, probably? Yes, we are more aware of each other and we see them better and they see us better. And um, in my newspaper we have more migrants than ever before. Um, working as journalists. Working as journalists, yes, not, not <laughs> as a uh, cleaning woman. So, um, it was new to some of my colleagues too. Uh, they found all these uh, Turkish uh, ladies there and they really didn't clean anything.